If you want to start working with text in Photoshop, it's important first of all to decide whether you want it to go out to print or whether it's going to go online as part of a website. Because the end result that you need in either case is very different. For example, here we've got what's called vector text. Now vector is made up of an outline which doesn't really have a thickness. You can apply a color to it and assign a thickness to it, but the vector line itself is just like a mathematical theory connecting points. So you can create a shape. And that shape, because it's not based on pixels, is infinitely scalable. And that's really how Adobe Illustrator works. Right now what we're looking at here is vector text. It's still editable. Over in the Layers window we've got a text layer. And it's named with the actual text that's currently on it. If I click on this with the text tool, I just woke it up. I can highlight it, I could edit it, I could change the color right here. We'll do all this later. Let's add a period at the end. Now if I zoom in on the letter G, it looks as if it's made up of pixels, doesn't it? You can see this anti-aliasing, as it's called, which means that instead of there just being a sharp cutoff between red pixels and white pixels, we've got all these intermediate shades. And the purpose of those, when you're working with pixels, is that when you're looking at it zoomed out, the curves look smoother. If that cutoff between the red and the white was absolutely sharp, and you either had red pixels or white pixels, this edge might look clunky. We might be able to see the kind of steps. Now if I check the resolution of this currently, it's not even available to me. And that's because this is vector text. There is no resolution. Even though when you zoom in with Photoshop, it looks as if there is. Hey, look, I've added a couple of spaces here. I didn't mean to. Now if I wanted to print this, it's not actually going to print as if it was made of pixels. It's going to print as vector. And that means it's going to print to the highest possible resolution of the output printer, which at a commercial print shop means very, very high resolution indeed. On the other hand, if I wanted to put this text as part of an image on a website, I've got to rasterize it. And that means convert vector to pixel data. And to do that, I'd go type, rasterize type layer. That underline disappears because even though I've still got the text tool selected, this is no longer editable type. And if I try to click on it, all I do is make a new text layer that I don't really want. So I'm going to bin that. If I zoom in again, look, it still looks as if it's made up of pixels. And this time it is. But it's no different from how it looked when it was actually vector. So Photoshop doesn't really differentiate between the two when you zoom in, because Photoshop is primarily involved with pixels. If you want to put text on an image for the website, you've got to turn it into pixels. And then you've got to end up with one layer, because websites don't support images with more than one layer. So you'd have to click on the Options button in the Layers window and choose Flatten Image, and now you can save it as a format suitable for web, a GIF, a JPEG, or a PNG file. If you want it for print, you can keep it as vector on its own layer, and you would save the image as a CMYK or grayscale TIFF file. And that way, when it's put through a commercial printing output, it will print out to the highest possible resolution of the output device. So that's how you deal with text for web versus text for print.